Ko Elk Toku Manga. Here they come. <laughs> Ko Roaring Fork Toku Ano. Yeah, it passes. No Ototahi Okofana. And Ko Kamiya Ao. Yeah. Tenakoto, Tenakoto. I can't read anymore through the tears. <laughs> Please know my heart is with you. Um, thank you, love. I'm totally used to the tears, it's just the audience isn't. Um, anyway, I'm here to share with you a little bit about building communities by building buildings. And there's a common theme that's moving through this day, which is, I think, part of a collective consciousness. And it is, what future are we creating together? And I think with that question in mind, I'd ask you to hold that as I um, share this um, short talk with you and listen for what is it that comes up in you? Is it something that I'm going to do? Is it something they are going to do? Thank you, Alina, for presencing that. Or is it something that we are going to do, which is coming really strong through so many of the talks today? To set a little bit of context, I'm going to talk about how we're moving through time and we're transitioning between ages and we're moving from the industrial age and into the age of belonging. Um, what that looks like is our jobs are changing from productive, repetitive to creative and every day is different and we're connecting with people. Our jobs are changing. Um, in our past era and last century, that was our identity. And so um, what job do you do? That became who you were. And in this century, it's about what communities you belong to. And that's plural. In the last century, it was about extractive economics. That is, how much can we extract from um, resources, usually to um, consolidate wealth into the hands of a few. And then in this century, it's about regenerative economics. How can we replenish resources and distribute wealth equitably? In the last century, it was about living in one place, working in another, playing in another, learning in another, with really rough boundaries between them. In this century, we're um, blurring those, um, let's say, the, the edges between with semi-public and semi-private space that curates connection. So this is this shift we're moving through between the industrial age and this age of belonging. And what's happening is our work is changing, our identity is changing, our systems are changing, and that will result in a change in our urban environments. There's an urban evolution going on, and it's every city everywhere. It's not a unique condition. It's part of natural evolution. Um, and the last century, because of the industrial age, what happened was is we were moving through, um, let's say our cities were designed a lot like conveyor belts. How can we move people and goods and services through them? And what's, um, this is a map of Christchurch. It moved from the walking city to the um, public transport city to the automobile city. What's happening now, is we're actually moving into a next era of urban. And I think what's, what I'm starting to see the evidence for, and I'm seeing it in Christchurch, is that we're actually starting to create places to connect people. And this will really change our built environment and our cities and how we actually um, uh, go through our daily lives. So this brings me to what is social architecture? There's a growing desire to be part of community. I don't think there's been a conversation yet um, that I've had over these three days that didn't have that come up in some shape, way, or form. Community, uh, as I use it, is a, is a group of people with a common purpose. Um, community breeds in places where people meet each other. Oh, that's not rocket science, really. Um, and there's always a shadow side. Um, restlessness is born from not belonging. So if social architecture enables community, how do we foster places of connection? This is a map of uh, Sydney. And um, what they've noticed is, is that this is a map of all the places where people meet and gather with different types of, um, uh, let's say, reasons to be or reasons to come together. And what they've noticed is, is that the more places that people have to come together, the stronger the societal well-being. They've drawn a direct correlation there. So I believe social architecture has a lot to do with people and their relationships and really deeply understanding relationships. I moved to Otatahi Christchurch in 2011 um, to be a part of the rebuild. Um, I moved there because my art form is urban um, and I grow old fast and cities change slowly. And Christchurch was going through a pivotal period of change in a compressed period of time. And so for me, it was an absolute perfect place to work with my art form. Um, it's also abundant with resources, arable land, fresh water, and it's, uh, no offense to Christchurch, but it's a wonderfully average city. So <laughs> we can test things 
there that makes sense in other places around the world. Um, and so that's really helpful. Um, I think it's a, a wonderful place to be able to test these ideas. Um, I wasn't allowed to practice as an architect when I moved there, which was a blessing in disguise, so I used my skills in other ways. The EHF uh, fellowship wasn't around then, and I went through every hoop and hurdle with immigration. What I did is I volunteered with the gap filler team, and with this project, I designed this with them. It was one of the very first pr projects that came up in, a, let's say, a city that was going through demolition. All those buildings in the background are gone, and new buildings built already. Um, this, what was br beautiful about the Pallet Pavilion, um, it was built by 250 volunteers. And what I learned there is that you can build community by building buildings. And that was the first time I saw it. It was the first time I saw the evidence of what I see as the, let's say, the future of cities. And what I could imagine is, why isn't that what every building is doing? How amazing, what future would we live in? So that's the tra trajectory I'm taking with the work that we're doing at OHU. Another project that I was deeply involved with um, is the exchange. Preston, who's here, now runs and owns this um, pretty much full out. And um, we were a group of creatives, Preston, um, that found a warehouse in the post-earthquake context. Um, what happens as an urbanist, if you don't have a place for creatives to develop a business or a practice, 15, 20 years down the line, you'll have a dead city. Creatives bring vibrancy to cities. And so Christchurch had lost all of its C-grade buildings. And so we were really concerned about as well, at 15, 20 years down the line, we're going to have a rather dead city if we don't have somewhere for the creatives to flourish and to develop their practice. So we found the warehouse after two years of looking. We opened the exchange. It's been open for four years now. And what we're practicing here is connected space. How do you bring things together that were separated in the last century, bring them together in the way that they're mutually supportive and support a community to grow? So here we have a showcase space, which also doubles it as our event space. We have a cafe, and we also have a production space. The purpose of the exchange is to cultivate a creative ecology. Those three programs, those three functions, overlap in ways where people meet each other, and we support the development of that community. So that notion of connected space is really key. Aho um, is the new vision that we're working on with a rather large team. Anaki Goodall is here. He's also on the trust, as is Huya Lambie, who I'm not sure if she's here or not today. Aho in Tadeo means people working together. This is another really strong theme coming through in the, in the new frontiers this time around. Um, it also stands for Office for Holistic Urbanism. We have three purposes, building community by building buildings, creating connected space, places where people meet each other and draw develop strong relationships. And the third big nut to crack is creating an equitable distribution of wealth through regenerative economic models. And we're doing this through um, collectively owned assets. It's essentially what it looks like is community development and property development coming together. We have three different kinds of projects, projects that we lead, projects that we partner on, and projects that we support. We have many different projects in the office right now. Um, all of the projects need similar things across these four different pillars. Um, first is the community weavers, um, and I was saying this yesterday to Phoebe, the next, gener or the next cities will be shaped by facilitators, the community weavers, last century cities, architects and engineers and de property developers and planners. It's a new profession. It's a really important profession. It's how do we facilitate people coming together. They will shape the next cities. The legal structures, last century, how do we protect ourselves from each other? In this century, how do we work together? Financial structures, they're regenerative, they're not extractive. It's a very different model. And property development, how do we take an idea through implementation? I'm going to share with you one of our projects. You've probably seen these around and many flyers on your tables. Um, Colette's Corner is our first project that we're leading. And this is a wonderful tongue twister, I dare you to say it 10 times. Colette's Corner is New Zealand's first community-minded equity crowdfunded commercial development. And um, that's a lot. And what's really behind that is even more profound. It's a total change. It's disruption to property development. How can we build places of connection and belonging and do that together? So Colette's Corner is a site in um, Littleton. It's about 1,000 square meters. Littleton is um, the largest port town in the South Island. It's 15 minutes from Christchurch. It was the epicenter of the earthquakes, and much of its downtown was lost. Um, it also has a vibrant market, um, and you can see Colette's Corner here in the foreground. Um, it's co-conceived, co-designed, and co-owned. 
And so for the last two years, we've been working with the people of Littleton to figure out what's appropriate to build there through many workshops, many surveys, many one-on-one -on -one interviews. Where we are today is the top two floors are going to be apartments. Those are designed on co-living principles. The upstairs, co-living principles basically means that you own your own apartment, but you have shared amenities. The entire rooftop is a shared deck. At the ground floor in the basement is a wellness center. The wellness center also is complemented by a restaurant and a co-working space. Where we are today, we've secured the land. We've listened to the community to come up with what's appropriate. We've developed a brief. We hosted a competition. We've taken the design, winning design from the publicly decided competition through preliminary design, and now we have the equity crowdfunding open where this can now be collectively owned. You can find all these details out online, and you also can talk with me later. One share costs $100. It's making it accessible for people to be participating in the commercial property in their towns and cities. And I close with why. And this is this equitable distribution of wealth. Eight people own 50% of the world's wealth. We all know our systems are broken. We also know that we design those systems, and we can redesign those systems. And so it's time to look at different ways of building our buildings so that they're supporting communities, and communities can really thrive. So I close with the same question we opened with. What future are we creating together? And building community by building buildings. Here, I'll cry again. <laughs> Thank you.